So we're just walking down the street here and we're gonna have a dog pop out in front of us to surprise us. And Kylo does not know. Come on, let's go bud. If there's a dog there, it's gonna pop out and surprise us. Come! So we've been practicing with other dogs for a while. It was a complete surprise. Come! And we have a dog here that is very hyper and excitable. Come! And so that's what you wanna do. You know, we've designed the come command so that even if you don't have food, because you won't have time to grab a treat. Come! Like, he doesn't know it's empty. He doesn't know your target hand is empty. And we'll, you know, on, on the other part of this video, we're showing you how to do the come command. And you just grab the, the leash with your left hand. It'll work time and time again if you practice with food. Come! Good. You can call him to you and get him out of there, whatever the situation is. There's another dog that, he wants to go say hi to good boy. See how he turned a, a, around to me? Come. Good. The first time he saw the dog. So we have another dog coming out. I think he knows. Come on out, Ronnie. Okay. So we have another dog coming out, a different type of dog. And he sees the dog. The dog's coming our way. See little dog. Come. Just got to use your come command. Call him away. And he's not pulling good and most of the time will turn back. Just never miss an opportunity to reward that new behavior pattern, which is come to turn away from the distraction, the dog, whatever it is, and reward him for that. If you had to do it last minute, no treats, come. Good, just love him up like crazy. I called him to me a bunch of times away from other dogs, hundreds of times probably at this point after a few weeks. And uh, he doesn't know why he wants to come to me. Come. He just will. Good boy. And I can replace the food with affection in the heat of the moment. And later on when you're practicing, you can practice with rewards. So you see, if you use rewards when you practice in a leash, it works without the rewards. Come. You're always using the leash, of course. Good. But if you want to practice off-leash recalls, which he will do. We don't have a yard right now that we can practice in, but he'll come without the leash too, you know, from 20 feet away or whatever. Uh, and that's a whole strategy to practice long distance recalls that I can tell you about when we do our lessons. Come. Good boy. In this greeting routine, we're walking up to the person's sit. You're always approaching when you're gonna do this with your friends, neighbors, whoever you want to introduce them to. You ask them to stand there. You always approach that person, never allow that person to, to approach him because he's a little bit apprehensive of strangers, as you've told me. So we've done this greeting routine with a bunch of different people. So you see how I had him sit. I stepped over, I gave him the little treat there. Go say hi, give him the treat. Come, he's even petting him, good. Sit, but I would say that people that he doesn't know, just strangers, just do it, uh, don't pet him this time. Just allow him to approach somebody, receive a gift, and then call him back to you because that's a big deal right there. That makes him feel safe about approaching people. And sometimes somebody will do, you know, reach for him the wrong way. And if, if they're a little bit strange in his eyes or if they smell funny or they're acting weird, that could trigger him to be afraid and maybe nip at them. So we don't want to do that. Just let him go over and accept the gift. Call him back to come. Go say hi. Come. Just like that, call him back. It makes um, doing, doing it this way, doing the greeting this way makes the dog feel safe because you're orchestrating every little bit of this. So you're having him sit, you're sending him over. Go say hi. Come. You're calling him back. Good sit. It's very structured and uh, he feels calm and confident because you're calling all the shots here. Plus he's done this many times with me. You'll do it many times as well and it really does change the dog's perception of what it means to uh, meet a new person. Sit. All right, we're going to go on a walk here, taking Kylo out on a walk kind of an awkward gate here. It's kind of big, so I have to step around it. 
But that's okay, because he stays in the sit stay. And then, okay, sit. I want to have him sit closer to make sure that you can see him. I did the same thing in my front door before I opened it. I had him sit, I opened it, I stepped out. He waited for me to come back to get him. And you can even practice by faking him out. Maybe you're not ready to allow him to walk out. This means that he's really thinking. He's not just following your body automatically. He's really waiting for you to say the command. Okay. And then never miss an opportunity, if you can, to do that little left turn. So I did that little left turn and I tapped him. It's just like tapping the brakes. He wants to go so badly, you know, in the beginning of a walk. He just was such a rusher. He would just rush and pull. And so you might have to tap him to give him that little reminder to calm down. But this is the beginning of the walk. And so, okay, we, got, we had the front door, we got the gate. Sit, we have the curb. But because I've done this every day that he's been here with me, he now anticipates what we're gonna do because it's the same thing every day and he calms himself down because he knows that the sooner he calms himself down and does these things correctly, so you saw what I did, I stepped out, I'm counting this, this curb as a boundary and I actually walked around him both ways too. Okay, because he wants to go on a walk, so I don't even have to use treats for this anymore. And I'm kind of exaggerating this crossing the street. Normally I'd be like this and he wouldn't be pulling. But if he ever starts pulling you again, just start walking slowly and tapping. And it will teach him to walk slower. But he'll never walk slow and not pull unless you slow down. And there's never a continuous tension, obviously. It's tap and release, tap and release, tap and release if he's pulling you. And I'm moving super slow just to accentuate what I'm explaining to you. Sit on the other side of the street. This is the way we always take our walk. Have him sit here and then finally go. Now he's free, now we start the walk. But as I would describe it, he's now in the zone because from the second I put the leash on him on the inside of the door, he was doing things my way. We didn't open the door until he was stayed in a sit-stay. We didn't go through that threshold until he stayed in a sit-stay. And here at my place, we have a gate. I don't think you have a gate, but any boundary that you can uh, control like that will really help him stay calm and get calmer over time. Also, it makes you uh, more important in his life. There's something here. He's barking at something. I don't know. I don't even know what it is. Come. So I'm going to call him away. So there's no animal. There's no person that I can see. But that's what you would do if there's something that is uh, getting him excited. He rarely barks at something on the street like that. We're starting our walk now after he got over barking or whatever he thought was over there. The camera person thinks that he was barking at the bulldozer. I don't know about that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> come. Good. He was sniffing something I didn't want him to sniff. Sit. Go. You might be doing that a lot because there are things on the street that you don't want him to get into. Really, that come command is just a, a great thing to use. If he pulls, all you have to do is you stop walking, let him go to the end of the leash, let that little training collar do its work. It'll just close all the way around. There's no pain, as you can see, but it's, it's so much easier to control a dog that might pull you. I think somebody's standing there, I think. But see how he comes back to me. Good, because that's what we always do. I always call him away from things that are excitable. So now, if you, if you keep practicing like this, he's going to do the same thing with you. So anyway, with the pulling, good boy, good. And you do those taps and releases like you just saw me do, and he's going to start coming back to you all the time. And that's exactly what you do. You don't always have to do treats. And that's the whole concept of the way I do things. I phase the treats out pretty quickly. Yeah, maybe every day I give him a treat for this or that, but at this point, if he was my dog and staying here after a few weeks of training, I phase the rewards out to almost nothing, and the training gets better. If he looks like he's gonna step off the curb, come, call him back to you. 
Good boy. And just love him up, mostly with me now, because of our relationship, because of the way I, I trained him. I don't need treats most of the time. But you need to use treats for a while, for a few weeks, just like I have, and then you'll start phasing them out as well. And then they become more important if you're not giving them treats all the time. So I would say just for two weeks at least, to be, to be very specific, have a reward, you know, in your hand when you call them to come. Come. Good. And then do the, the down and, and the sit stays like we're showing you on this video, the way I show you with rewards. And then start to phase them out after a couple of weeks. Sit. Good. Notice how I'm not using rewards because I don't have to anymore because I, I've been giving him rewards for, I gave him rewards for three weeks and then I started phasing them out. And actually, I started phasing out the rewards for the SIT after about two weeks because I usually do that with every dog because that's the first thing that they learn because they come here, almost every dog knows what sit means when they come here. This is how I reward them if I was gonna reward them for sit, eye contact, He's actually looking in my eyes at this moment. I'm not bending over, I'm not all contorted, I'm not doing this, it's very easy. Nope. If he pops up before you release him, reset him exactly like that. So it's eye contact, very relaxed, straight down, good. He's literally looking in your eyes as he takes the reward. Reward him like that after the sit stay, after you've done something. And then, that is a sit stay where he just accepts you walking around both ways from each each side. One more reward. Good. And then to release him with your right hand, make sure this is this leash is always loose. If he pops up, you just tap him and say no and he'll go back. With your right hand, pat his chest and say go. And he's free. Down. Good. I'm not giving him treats for the down anymore until the end. What I would do is just, um, what I'm doing now is just doing all kinds of things with the down stay. You can do all sorts of things like pull on the leash, and you saw me walking around him already. Um, can practice out in public like we are now. There's a bunch of stuff going on behind the, the camera person. And when you reward him at the end, after he's successfully stayed in that downstay, you just make sure you swing in on his level because if you do this, you could tempt him to jump up and grab it. So just swing in on his level, put it between his little paws. Good. Make sure that he waits until you actually place it there. So if he tries to touch your hand, nope. If he even moves towards it, pull back and say no. And then he'll wait, see how he's waiting respectfully. Set it there and withdraw and say good when he takes it. The way to release him out of that is he waits to come back next to him. By the way, if he pops up before you release him, he pops up, you just say no and you can pivot on one foot and just ease him down like that or um, if he, move, if, he uh, runs, if he gets up and tries to run away for some reason, you just say no, you step into him and uh, reset him. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna release him. Okay, sit, go. So I just released him, but let's say that he popped up. You're having problems with uh, practicing the down state. Pops up, you just step into him, do that circle, you step into him. Put him back. You'd say no, do your little circle. Just put him back, gently but firmly is the operative phrase. Put him back, make sure he really waits. Maybe walk around him again or something. And then one last reward, because you always want to end on a success. And then on a good note, in his mind as well, no. And this thing where he might roll over because somebody, no. Now he's getting confused because I'm talking so much. See that? That's good that we have this on video. He was taught by somebody else before me to roll over, so he naturally does that. You're gonna say no, and you can apply just a little bit of pressure and lure him back on his elbows. 
good. If you're gonna lure him, make sure that you do pay him. Don't take the treat away from him. Once he, once he does what you want, once he's back where you want him to be, make sure you do give him that because that's only fair, right? So we end on a success. Good. I'm glad he did that thing because it's something he would do constantly all day long when I first got him. And there's no tricks here. It's just tricks can happen. It's fine, but make sure he's got basic obedience first. And if you want to practice roll over later, never do it out of a down stay because you'll never have a real down stay. He'll just whenever he, he wants attention or wants somebody to, you know, let him be free, he'll just roll over and there goes your downstay. So tricks and the basic obedience to downstay and sit stay and come are completely separate. Make sure he's got rock solid training first and then later on you can do tricks and stuff. When you're ready to release him out of a downstay, go back next to him, pat your leg and say, okay, have him sit. Always release him from a calm sit stay. Go like that. Make sure it's a calm release because if he's hyper and or he anticipates what you're going to do and he jumps the gun before you actually release him, it's really not helping as much because our goal is that we end on a calm note there. And our goal really is the byproduct of uh, practicing a calm down stay and releasing calmly is that every day we do that, he gets a little bit calmer in general and that he's like this when he's off the clock and not training. So that's our goal with that. We're really after just as much after the byproduct of how we do the down stays and sit stays as, um, you know, just as much that as the actual, you know, doing, doing this, doing the downs or sits.